Hello and welcome back. Uh, thanks for staying with us or joining us if you've just now joined us. Um, we are on to the winners uh, group matches to qualify out. So whoever wins this series will have a place in the round of 16 for the Season 3 Challenger League of ASL. Shit um, is getting real right now. It's, you know, and you know so what? I know? It's, it's getting real for another reason too. I'm a Terran. You're a Zerg. We've got a TVZ lined up <laughs> for us on uh Aklon Wastes, and I'll go ahead and introduce the Terran player uh, as befits my race and house. Okay. Spawning in the bottom right hand corner, representing Templar Gaming. He took a really good series against a Protoss player that was beset on all sides by all ends. It is your red Terran Boomerang. And in the top left hand corner, we do have the green Zerg Soldier Victus, who is going for a hot first play. Of course, that's pretty damn standard. I'm just going to see what happens in this game, though. It's hype. It it's hype. Come on. It is. It is. Yeah, it is. It is. It's Aklon Wastes. It's terrible, uh, in my opinion, <laughs> for, 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 for all play. No. Uh, it doesn't really favor <laughs> favor uh, slow plays because if you can get the air advantage in terms of drops or muta play around the outskirts where there's all this empty space to throw your yeah. medevacs uh, and your mutas, that's where the plays can be made. So if one player decides to go more turtly, uh, into Mech or into Roach Hydra, we're going to see what the response is uh, in terms of that. You are the Zerg player. How do you feel about uh, Roach Hydra play on, on Akalon Wastes? Uh, I don't like it on Akalon Wastes as much as I like, other, I like it on other maps. Um, the third base is so easily defended, and especially like you can get these four bases, and you see if you're going for Roach Hydra, and your Terran player gets four bases, it's like, GG. Like, there's nothing you can really do about it, because all the Terran need to do is get siege tanks, say, even at the natural. Uh, and then that whole area, the whole area between the third and the natural is like defended, plus also the kind of the fourth base. So I don't really like Roach Hydra uh, on this map specifically, but it does work on a lot of maps, especially uh, the Dream Pill maps, uh, the weather's so, you know, rush distance is very small, their base is usually quite exposed and things like that. But in this map, I don't think it's got, I don't think it's got that much uh, merit. We do have a Reaper on the way and a second one in production as the Red Terran goes ahead, scouts around the natural. He's going to try and pick off a drone or two. Ah, no, he's going to go right into the main just to see the type of shenanigans that Soldier Victus is throwing down for him. Two lings are going to come out to meet him as the Queen is 20 seconds or so from, from morphing. He's going to kite back with the Reaper, try and kill a ling or two, see if he can get a, even a kill or two with the Reaper is, is good. When the second Reaper, which is shortly on its way, comes to join the fight, these fights are going to be literally twice as fast doing the math on the fly. Uh, mm -hmm. And we're setting up for, uh, for what seems to be a typically standard opening from both of these players into the mid-game. Yeah, but I'm actually opting to go for the third Reaper, which I really, really like, especially against his gasless play. And of course, uh, Soldier Victor is able to scout that. He, you know, uh, he can see this third Reaper coming out there. He sees the factory going down as well. Um, so apart from that, everything does seem to be going pretty standard. Um, the the third and fourth queen is a bit delayed than you'd like to because it was a bit supply blocked there. The supply blocked again, um, not going terribly well for Soldier Victor. But this gas opening is going to come into favor in a bit. And we have a third CC on the way, so just about as uh, macro favorite as you can imagine, except for the third hatchery. But we do, just as we say that, see two gas is taken at the main. As these three Reapers are probably going to be able to get this queen kill, unless uh, this other queen can come and support. You can poke forward to those Reapers, you can get that queen kill, but he's actually instead choosing to favor a uh, couple of drones there, and he's able to pick them off and hop around with his Reapers. Uh, in terms of losing a queen early game, how much does that put a damper on the mood? Uh, it's kind of frustrating, especially with Gauss's play, because it really limits uh, in terms of the creep spread, because you really need creep spread to be able to get a third base, since you're not going to have speedlings. And if you, you know, say, lose a queen, you're going to have to remake a queen no matter what anyways, and either you're going to lose a creep chamber or you're going to lose um, injects. Uh, and the injects is having the extra larvae is kind of one of the things, the good things about going gas is going to have all those larvae to make um, drones with, but he actually does lose a Reaper there kind of carelessly. We do see a Reaper go down. He was actually playing a really smart play there. I saw what he was trying to do. He was taking the uh, drones off of the extractors, uh, trying to limit his gas income so that he mm -hmm. can go ahead and, and buy some time uh, and delay speed. Speed has just now started at 7 minutes, 23 seconds. Not exactly a standard timing or, or an advantageous one, especially with the Hellions now uh, on the the factories on the reactor coming into play. So uh, in terms of this early game, uh, slight favor to Terran, in my opinion, because he's been able to lay down 
um, his natural get get you know his wall up and, and start to maybe poke out and do some pressure and, and halt some creep spread. Oh yeah, Terran is in a really really good position now. Uh, Zerg isn't even taking, being able to take a third base because obviously he's taking so much damage from those initial three reapers and going like Asa style really hurts if you don't if you're not able to get that third base up and you just see you no know, rallying coming out from uh, Boomerang here with all those Hellions. This is going to stop so much. And um, give him so much time to like get the 30 C up, and he's not under any sort of pressure, uh, because he knows that the Zerg has gotten you know forced to go for this two base play, but he has gone Gasa, so it's no like Ling Bane Ling's not going to come anytime soon. One thing I do like to see is the Viking was the first unit produced out of the starport, and he's probably going to go ahead and send that around to uh, catch any scouting overlords, which, mm -hmm. if you look at the map, are all in pretty poor positions. Oh, the Lings Ooh. are going to get the surround on the Hellions. They're able to fire off a couple of volleys, but not really paying dividends, as Speedlings are going to surround and get all, what was it, four, four to six Hellions and, and two mm -hmm. Reapers. Yeah, I like the, the choice, actually, for him to get the Siege Tank here. After going for kind of a greedy play, getting that starport a bit more early than he would usually get, and he's what he's opted to do is get get a starport instead of getting an earlier um, double engineering bay, and it's working out for him because he has that Viking. You know, he can actually use that, but he's just keeping it there, which is a bit you know unfortunate. But he needs to seat up this tank so he can clear up these links. He's just gonna see it. He's gonna have plenty of time. The links are gonna take a very long time to go ahead and break down those rocks. Uh, one thing he does is he's he needs to send this Viking around. Uh, to, it's finally got one kill of, a, of an overlord. It needs he needs to start utilizing uh, it and spread it around the map and, and pick up all these overlords. He's gonna pick off another one. Um, and the Zerg player, he's got plenty of supply, but he's really focused on uh, preventing drops with those the positioning of those overlords to catch the medevacs as they come yeah. out. And uh, picking off those scouted overlords is a, is surely a headache. It's really unfortunate actually that uh, Boomerang just you know kind of it seems like he just forgot. Oh, he's only on one engineering bay actually. Excuse me, but he there's no reason for him to not go for double engineering base base scout, especially so cutting like gasless. Um, as long as you have you know the reapers at the front, you can see if there's any sort of roach play coming. He just get that tank for safety. There's no reason to not get the double upgrades. It's one thing where he can actually, you know, this player can crawl back into this game. It's having way better upgrades and be able to trade way more efficiently. He does scan that third base now, so he knows there's nothing too crazy coming about. Um, and his production is going to start kicking in, especially with his uh, 30C about to land with all those SCVs. I like uh, that you bring in the idea that he hasn't gotten a second engineering bay yet, because what he's gone ahead and elected to do is is get uh, infantry uh, weapons, and, and now he's going to go ahead and throw it on that second engineering bay. But he had the minerals, and the thing about upgrades is they're about time. It's not the investment of the minerals, right? You're gonna have the capability to spend it. What? Okay, so say you build a factory with a tech lab and a siege tank. Well, you've already covered the cost of an upgrade and a and a, a armory or a or an engineering base. So you might as well uh, to give your existing army that extra little bit of oomph. It's the time investment. If you wait a little bit too long, uh, it's going to be too much. As we see an engagement go down here in the in the middle, one siege tank is going to get surrounded uh, as marines do pull back. So it seems like we have a sort of uh, a bit of a early early wings of liberty marine tank going on. No widow mines out just yet, or in the production tab. Yeah, uh, I like the push from Boomerang actually to do that because in this situation he knows that the third base is about to finish for the Zerg player. And um, basically, what that just means is it makes uh, soldier victors have to make a decision of do I make drones to saturate the third base or do I survive? And although he wasn't actually that bad because he made so many links early. Um, it could have been really, really bad if he you know, was forced to make so many joints. But in this situation, he's already so far behind. If you even look at the income tab, it's 70 uh, SEVs to 50 drones. And that's just not a position you want to be in ever. Yeah, uh, along with mules, uh, that's never something you exactly want to <laughs> see. Um, and I mean, the only thing Zerg really has going for him, uh, Soldier Victus has going for him right now, is. Uh, and the upgrade advantage. He does have mutas on the way, but mutas are are kind of built for for harassment. Or rather, they are attacking the the base, trying to pick off a, a tech lab or two. They're built for the harassment, and the turrets are going down in in the uh, mineral lines. If he has marines in, in right places, or if he goes ahead and elects to push, the mutas aren't necessarily going to help against this army too much. Yeah. Um. Basically, those mutas are kind of his god's hand right now. He has so much weight in these mutas that he can't even afford to counterattack with them. He really needs to bring them back to help with these tanks. He just doesn't have the income to do what his strategy kind of entails. is you know, counterattack with these mutas and hold the ground with Ling Bane. He doesn't have enough Bane Lings, he doesn't have enough Lings just to hold up this attack. It's going to be really, really hard to see. What? 
Yeah, sorry. He needs to like 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 you're talking. He needs to either bring his meters back and help out, or maybe bring the army back, which uh, the Terran's not really falling for, and, and and the move didn't work out as you rightly predicted. Mm. Although the meters aren't going to give it that much, I do kind of like the idea of doing that meter harassment, especially with these tanks, because even if he wants to attack, he has to clear this creep, and the sea tanks have to you know have a bit of time before they can actually move out. But uh, He's actually falling behind his production right now. He's losing so many years to these minutes. These minutes are actually doing a lot of damage right now, which is kind of unfortunate. Yeah, so we did, uh, I'm going to go ahead and apologize, we called it, I called it exactly wrong, the mutas uh, kind of did what they were supposed to do, took out an entire uh, mineral line, actually getting the orbital command down to 280, are the SCPs going to get there in time? He's going to lose the orbital command, is he? He needs to keep targeting that with those mutas. Um, it's on fire, now the SCPs come in, this is going to be really close. Okay, now they're there repairing, but it's not enough, those mutas are going to pick off this orbital command, yeah. this is huge! Soul to Vectors is just like paying a, um, it's, oh, it's actually a minus, massive, massive engagement. Massive engagement. Massive engagement. Banelings getting all sorts of hits. Uh, he's going to pick up in those medevacs. He's going to lose the siege tanks. And the game has gone absolutely wow. in the other favor now. This is an engagement that went totally in Soldier Victus's um, advantage and uh, went right in his favor. And this is really bad. Pretty good Widow Mine hits going off. But is it going to be enough? There's a lot of Lings and Banelings coming in. These two, uh, two, two Zerglings doing so well against this 2-1 you know, uh, upgraded units. But it's just basically. Um, Boomerang just took too way too long to make his move. He just sat there and waited for. He gave too much credit to Soldier Victus in terms of what actual situation he was in, and ended up in a situation where he just waited too long, and you know, gave a bit of sloppy mechanics as well to force so many of these units to go down at the third base with those meters instead of just clearing it up the proper way. He just took too much damage from that. You're, you're exactly right. He didn't uh, see that. He didn't have the feeling for the timing of when he needed to push. Uh, and it, and it came back to bite him in the butt a little bit because the mutas needed to dance around the side to go harass, and that was the play that uh, maybe made him question a little bit. Okay, should I push? Blah, blah, blah. He was caught between two mines. When he did push, he was on creep. The banelings and lings were able to surround really easily, and now he's going to try and drop, and the mutas are actually going to spot <gasps> oh, it. No way. Oh, and they're going to pick them both up. He's going to have to cheer drop. He's going to lose one medevac. Oh, no, he's okay. He's going to come back and pick it off. Uh, this is not exactly a trade you want to do. You don't want to necessarily lose Muta's... I mean, he did pick up one dropship, but he's going to pull back now. Yeah. Uh, a lot of, uh, he actually gets off this ramp, which is really, really, really... Yeah, the supply uh, depot is down. Right and he's just going to be, you know, loads of banelings right now. There's just not enough stuff here for Terran. The, the banelings and the lings are going to come in, and they're going to ravage this natural. The SEVs are pulled and splitting, and the banelings hits are just going to... There's too much. You can split for days, but if you have... 40 banelings versus 20 marines. Well, good luck splitting against that, and especially in a tight grouping like this, there's just no hope for Boomerang down to 57 supply. The lings are going to town on everything, the overseers, so they're able to pick up widow mines and all sorts of things. GG is called in the first game. All right, here we are on Cloud Break. Uh, we do have the second game. Did I, I Cloud Break? Cloud, cloud Kingdom. Break. Cloud Break. Cloud, uh, Day Break and Cloud Kingdom. All right, so we've got Cloud Kingdom, <laughs> the uh, purple yep. wasteland for you. Correction. Uh, so game two of our TVZ series between the winners. It is... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start the introdu introductions. That's what I'm okay, doing. Touch, right? So, spotting yeah, in the top right, uh, representing Templar Gaming, he is our Red Terran, Boomerang. On the bottom left hand corner, we do have playing for Team Cinder, the Green Zerg, Soldier Victus. And Soldier Victus, uh, of course, coming off of a game one victory on Aklon Wastes. Mm -hmm. um, really interesting game. I don't know if it's going to tell us a lot because of how uh, weird it seemed to play itself out. Um, you know, uh, I think there's a lot of good discussion going on in the in the Twitch chat, and uh, and which is rare to see. Generally, I see a lot of stuff that isn't talking <laughs> about StarCraft. I think <laughs> there's there's like three or four rules of Twitch chat. Is in the first rule is everyone's a grandmaster. Yeah, Twitch grandmaster. Twitch grandmaster yeah, yeah. Um, and then like rule number three or four is all Twitch chat eventually descends into Protoss hate. <laughs> or something like Star that. Star costumes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, or, or ba balance whining in general. Um, but we do have... Uh, where was I going with this? A good good discussion in the Twitch chat talking about that last game um, and how kind of weird it played out. Of course, the Terran player lost early Hellions. They're talking about losing map vision. Um, but really, it came down to Soldier Victus, uh, I think, just capitalizing on a really good engagement that he was able to, to get the better end of. Yeah, um, basically, it was kind of annoying because... 
the mutas did way too much damage. Uh, basically, the way that push is supposed to work, where he, you know, he's bringing all the sea tanks with him, is that he should be able to either reinforce it, reinforce that push, you know, with the sea tanks there, or cover multiple waves. But because of the mutas came in at that point, he was sending like waves over to help the third, but all just died randomly, you know, like a couple of marines here, here and there, and he wasn't able to reinforce it. Whereas Zerg's able to, you know, increase his army count at the time at the same time, and it right. just makes it really, really hard. Um, to stay that far out on the map, even though he was like, at such a uh, huge lead, he lost the third base and he lost the engagement because he stayed out too long. Right, and uh, I think it's a good point to bring up the just the general idea. He had the mutas as as you know as a big ball there, just chilling over that third expansion, uh, and the reinforcing marines and widow mines were just kind of just filling in, just trickling in, and they weren't able to get a good head of steam. You know, marines are good versus mutas, but not when there's three or four of them at a time, and you've got twelve or you know, thirteen mutas, and they can just keep regening on that. That's pretty, you know, they heal fairly quickly. Um, we do have. A bit of a different start, not too crazy. Instead of going right into three CCs um, and three Reapers, uh, we just had the the one Reaper made. It did end up paying for itself. It got three kills pretty early, uh, and those were Lings. Uh, and then we have Hellions on the way. Um, one thing Boomerang did change up in his build was he built his CC on the high ground uh, just in case there's some early Ling pressure and totally different from last game. Soldier Vic is going to go ahead with this Roche push. Uh, I really like this push from Soldier Victors because in the last game, he actually was delayed for third base for so long, which is usually a tell, but he actually wasn't even planning anything except for maybe that l small Ling push. Uh, but right now, you know, Boomerang didn't go for a third to see, which is probably what Soldier Victors expected, but he's going for this push anyways, but he actually hasn't got enough stuff to deal with this. He needs to get a tank out ASAP. These are a lot of roaches. I don't know if he's going to be able to see this. And to be fair, roach pushes are extremely deadly at this point in time. Um, you know, he's got... He's got, uh, he sees, he sees the roaches now. He, he's bringing his reaper back. He's bringing his hellions back. But this is enough. The ro roaches are already in the natural. They're targeting down the supply depot. He's going to pull his workers and he's probably going to lift the CC here. Bit of a supply block going on for our Terran player. Uh, what's the move now? He's, he's trying to put out a siege tank, but he's supply blocked. He has no units in production right now. He's going to oh, have to just... micro these hellions for the, for the, you know, for the rest of his life. And I don't think he's going to be able to do it. Uh, the Hellions that keep them here at the base is kind of a is kind of a misplay. He should really just brought them over and try to get some damage done. The Hellions were not going to do anything against this. That's not what he needs. He needs a siege tank, and bringing them over to the natural. Even if they die, they free up supply, and he wouldn't have been supply block because you can't even kill the uh, win the game, especially with these you know, re reinforcement. Uh, sorry, the uh, repairs on the. Yeah, on the this, on the this, bus, this, yeah. this this push can do game ending damage because rather you know okay he can keep the supply bunkers up but if you you're gonna keep having to pull SCVs with the number of roaches as big especially with the supply block and the siege tank was yeah. so late. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's a really really nice build there from uh, Soldier Victor, just capitalizing on what he expected Boomerang to, uh, Boomerang to do, and just working out really really well for him. But he's not gonna be able to get the siege tank. The siege tank is gonna be able to uh, thwart away these yeah. roaches, and he's gonna be able to land a CC done. Yeah, so we do see the game uh, tend to, uh, I guess, maintain homeostasis here for a little bit. Even, you know, it's not necessarily evening out, but it has uh, chilled out for a little bit. The Roach push uh, was able to to really break apart the build here. Uh, Boomerang, what's you know, you know what's going through his mind right now. He scans, he sees third. He's uh, he's got, feeling. I've got to get out. I've got to land this natural. Otherwise, I'm going to be pinned up here, and the Zerg is just going to run away with that that creep spread. He's going to run away with the macro advantage, and that's never what you want to have. Um, I was kind of confused to see why he built two extra factories, whether it was just going to be straight up mech or you know some sort of blue flame hellion push. But it was really, really greedy for him to do that, and I really didn't like the fact that he got the tech lab on the barracks and didn't say you know make a marauder or anything like that. He was playing off all only one marine and his hellions. So the roaches were the only thing he could actually lose to, but he didn't have even have a precaution ready for that. To be fair, he is now uh, establishing his second, and he does have three factories up. So if he gets any semblance of production, and the Zerg is not fully capable and, and ready to respond to uh, any sort of mech play, which he does see Hellions in the siege tank, but that isn't necessarily a dead give that he's going to go transfer into mech. Uh, this this is the way to get back into this game because we see from uh, Soldier Victus, well, he's making lings, he's getting his spire up, uh, and if we see straight up Zerg play, or rather straight up mech play, and we get some uh, doors on the field and turrets and, and, and this and that sort of thing, that's the way back into your game after having your second denied for so long.
Yep. Uh, although this meter switch, if it's not gonna, if it's gonna be completely unscouted, it's probably gonna end the game or at least become cri crippling damage. He's gonna he's probably force marine. another council. Yeah, he's got one marine and he hasn't even started bringing Thor's because he wouldn't need to make Thor's um, without thinking, you know, that there's gonna be a meter oh, switch coming. It's the he's supply making... block though. Just like yeah. in the beginning of the game, the siege tank was took so long. He supply blocked again, and the Thor, he's got building. Uh, no, he's got it queued up, but it's not building, and this is, you know, it's another thing that's just kind of shooting himself in the foot with. Um, this push, I really think, could actually just stop the third base. He doesn't have anywhere near enough stuff to deal with this. Immutas are going to come out, but he's already making banelings, so he's not going to have as much gas that he needs to. He's going to, he can only make two meters right now. What are two meters going to do against this, especially with the repair? He's actually making him into hell that's right now, and this third base is a goner. Oh, this is really fantastic play. I love the idea that he brought this, the, the SCVs to repair the siege tanks. He's going to leapfrog them forward. He's going to target down a queen first, and then I bet you he moves on to the hatchery. Uh, this is really good play. We're talking about StarCraft is a chess match, and he's behind, and now he's got to make a play to come back in and, and, and do something. And also, he sees the mutas, so he knows that the back home, the fact that he's making two Thors, one up, you know, only 15 seconds away from popping out, he might lose uh, a bit of stuff uh, to these re reinforcing units, but, you know, the push to take out the third might be enough to pay off this, this loss. Yeah, uh, he wanted to push in there, just because he knows he doesn't have a he doesn't have a 30 C on the way, so in a certain situation he could have made a 30 C behind this and then he would have been fine. But he had to commit something and try to just go for it because he has no back. He's very little backup plan. And Those, he did kill the third, so it seems to be okay right now. He killed the third and he was also able to kill all the army aside from the mutas. Now we have links coming across the field, but with uh, a Thor and some Hellions, we're going to see how how this plays out. Some of them are morphing into Banelings. Um, the SCVs really provided the extra bit of girth. He's got to smell this. He has to know this is coming. He's got to wall off. The Widow Mine's got to get a glorious miracle shot. You know, this is going to be a difficult hold for Terran. But, you know, to be fair, he's got Hellbats and a Thor, so you can make the dreams... <laughs> you can make him happen with those. He's got two Thors oh, yeah, on yeah. the field. Oh, wow. He actually gets a group connection off of the uh, Widow Mine, you know, only getting like two, two Zogans or so. And that's going to broke really, really well for him, especially because he only has this amount of Hellbats. And yeah, Hellbats are great, but whenever it comes against Banelings, and then you get the Lings on top of the Thors, it's going to help so much with the Mutas. Even, it's a low, even though it's a low amount of Mutas, that's fine. Because you're going to be able to have, you know, those Lings and Banelings to deal with this Thor Hellbat kind, but what he needs now is Siege Tanks. Yeah, he needs Siege Tanks to hit the splash damage, to hit those, you know, he needs to target the Banelings and make sure they don't hit the Hellbats, because Hellbats are still biological. Um, they are not... You know, they're, they're light units, so they're not going to be able to soak up the banding damage. Um, actually, a, a move that you see sometimes these days is you see the Thors um, go out in front of the army, and then you morph your Hellbats into Hellions, and you actually kite them back. Um, and you kind of hope to God that the Thors will get the shots off on the Mutas due to the patch where they yeah. now shoot air first. Um, but that's, that's sort of... Uh, um, you know, a tricky play and it's gimmicky and it, mm -hmm. and it only works sometimes and especially losing the heavy gas investment in the Thors is never a good idea. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what's going on here with Soldier Victor. He's making like spores and spines at his third base. Uh, I don't really understand that, but he is trying to get something done with those links in a natural and it obviously runs into a full wall off there. But it's kind of cute because Soldier Victor has just, you know, decided to go for some mutas, but he's going straight up in the roach right now. And I like this because if your mind doesn't scout the fact that this is happening, he's going to keep making Thors. And if he was in like an even economy, uh, a lot of roaches could just kill this army that he has if he's not making siege tanks. Because he we wouldn't want to make siege tanks uh, in this situation. Right. We did have some mutas harass the main. Um, as an engagement goes down in the middle of the field, as Banelings try to come in and get some connections on uh, Hellbats, but they run away. Um, there was a good repair on the turret, and now those SCVs are all there doing uh, absolutely nothing. They're just chilling, idle SCVs. Uh, as in another engagement with two Hellbats and some Lings goes down in the middle. Um, supply now in favor of Terran. Uh, most of that's going to be in his uh, Thors and you know, in, in the big, the big yeah. army of the mech. Um, Hellbats also inflate supply and Hellions. Uh, so you know, not necessarily out because Soldier is is getting up a good heavy uh, mineral and gas bank, and of course with with larvae he can uh, spin it all rather quickly. Yeah, lings with good upgrades are going to do really well against the composition, especially since you know he hasn't started making sea sensors oh, at all because he's I so don't scared. Know. No, if, if you if you have the if you have the banings and the banings are really right. really up, well upgraded, and you're able to clear out all the hellback kind, what are Thor's going to do against Lings? They're not going to be able to do anything. He, he's building Thor's because he's scared about the meter count getting the too big. Count, he's not right. even making meter. He's just making Ling Bailing, and it's really really smart, especially since the um, he's, he's only going to be on these three factories. 
since you can see that he hasn't actually took his third base. Third base is about to go down, uh, you know, sit down now. He's probably going to go for a massive Ling Bane push and then take a fourth base behind it. He is making one tank, but he's got a lot of production that is doing nothing. So he's got a lot of stagnant buildings. Um, he's got a couple of, this is uh, the Terran, obviously. He's got a couple of SCVs that are that are chilling in the main. Uh, one thing that uh, I do like coming from his, his side of things is he's not necessarily getting himself distracted when the Muta... Uh, harassment happened he didn't over make uh turrets he didn't make like you know <laughs> six or seven turrets in his main to to log uh, to block it off and, and section out certain parts yeah. um and that actually frees up some minerals for certain things that are gonna you know be a part of your army in, in the later push mm. bird lords uh coming out here uh is gonna be the choice here for the zerg player i really do not like this i feel like this is a bit of a bit of a choking mistake because in this situation he's got fours and Brutalers are really, really good against high siege tank counts. They're going to be able to do splash damage onto, you know, units. He's only got one, and he knows he's forced out all these stores. So why would you go, you know, Brutalers whenever, especially because they have that, you know, change in upgrade where, you know, they could do really, really good damage against uh, Brutalers. And it just means, it, it, it. I don't know, it just feels like maybe it can only be used for defense because if he tries to go and attack with this and the Thors get really good shots off, it just, you know, it could be game over. He has no tech to follow it up with. He did uh, actually. He did um, research pathogen glands, so he uh, yeah. does have infestors um, that. We, well, he doesn't have them yet, but he will. Um, I think transition probably into infestors. I, I mean, I don't know yeah. why, why else you would, you know, research pathogen yeah. glands. Um, but so you 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 don't think that the brood lords for me. Uh, you know he's morphing them in the in the bottom left corner, so obviously Terran doesn't see it. Um, Boomerang doesn't see it coming yet. But the mech army is is decently slow if he's going to keep them in Hellbat form, and and so you know slow army versus slow army. I don't know if the Thors are really going to be able to you know five Thors is five Thors, but if you get a, a good head of head of uh, Broodlords up, I don't know how much uh, damage the Thors are going to be able to do to them, honestly. Yeah, it's gonna just depends on the map and the way the map designed because in this situation the third base has quite a small bit of dead space where you know the the uh Brutalos kinda shoot over towards that third base, but there's gonna be a point where the siege tanks are gonna be able to hit the bird lords, and because this game's relatively low economy, like he's not gonna have that many bird lords as he wants to, and if he just gets like, you know, these six stores can like one shot uh the bird lords at this point, and if he just gets those down, then there's not that much of a follow up here from the Zerg player. The, um since it's and they're not gonna be able to force the panic. Because although siege tank count is increasing now, it's not that you know 10, 12 siege tank count that you know Brutalis would be break great against. It's like help out Thor with a little bit of uh, siege tanks uh, added onto it. The engagement looks like it's about to go down. Terran scans and sees the army. It's coming in. I don't think this is a good idea because he doesn't have his Broodlords there in time just yet. Hellbats are going to be able to clear up. Now the Broodlords are going to actually, Thors are going to get some really good shots against those Broodlords. But the Banelings and Lings rush in to take out all the Siege Tanks. And now the Thors are surrounded by these Lings. The Lings with the upgrades and the Broodlords don't even give a shit. They don't give two fucks about no Thors. And that Zerg army took care of business. And I don't know what the response now is from Boomerang because he lost all his big units in that he, one big yeah. push. He lost everything there and he didn't have a lot of the siege tanks there with him whenever he engaged in that situation. But it's kind of unfortunate because the upgrades are really, really paying out for Soldier Victor's right now. And all those Hellbats were so clumped up that the Banelings were able to clear out so many of them. And then they, were, and they didn't have the Blue Flame upgrade as well. So they were able to clear out those Lings. And the link then links wouldn't be able to kill all the stores and then you know it's just you know one thing after another just being really really bad for him right now yeah it just came down to a big army going against another big army and the one big army won uh this is uh about as gg as it gets it's lings and banelings broodlings all the lings of the world are flooding in and uh disrupting mineral lines absolutely chewing through this production uh taren not gg in out of sheer honor he's gonna bushido code <laughs> down to the last scv he's gonna auto repair on himself and use that drill to just drill through his own face it is gg good luck uh on to the round of 16 is the first